Hi everyone, this is Leah Medwick, your lead course instructor for advanced e-clinical training. And by now, I'm sure you're following along with our pharmacology lessons. And so today we're talking about analgesics or otherwise known as pain medications. Before we begin to talk about pain medications themselves, we first need to truly understand what is pain. Um, that sounds like a very simple answer, but um, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So pain is the number one complaint made to clinicians. Nearly every clinician, every nurse, every medical assistant, patient care tech, doctor, um, physician's assistant, uh, interacts with patients who are in pain. So whether you work in an inpatient acute care setting or an outpatient specialty clinic, the odds are that a large number of the people you treat or um, treat or seeing are experiencing some type of physical pain. Um, now, chronic pain is a little bit different than acute pain, and we'll talk about that on the next slide, but chronic pain lasts for more than six months and is associated with an Increased rate of depression as well as decreased physical activity and increased rates of comorbidities so you know this is why it is very important to um, you know take your patients pain seriously when they tell you that they are in pain and treat it accordingly um, so pain is what your patient says that it is so two types of pain here is, you know, we have acute pain. Um, I'm sure by now every one of us has had some short, sort of acute pain in our lives. And this is short-term pain that comes on suddenly and has a specific cause, um, usually associated with some type of tissue injury. Generally, it lasts for fewer than six months and goes away once the underlying cause is treated. Common causes of acute pain include broken bones, surgery, dental work, um, labor and childbirth, cuts, burns. Now chronic pain is a little bit different. This is pain that lasts for more than six months and even after the original injury has healed, um, that is when pain is considered to be chronic. Common causes of chronic pain include um, you know, migraines, low back pain, lots of people have chronic low back pain. Um, arthritic pain, either associated with osteoarthritis of large joints or um, autoimmune disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and chronic traumatic injury pain, so, you know, patients that have had traumatic injuries that have had, you know, extensive surgical procedures um, you know, one or many um, to fix the problem, you know, continue to have pain when that injury has been uh, fixed. So how do we treat pain um, today, of course, with medications, analgesics, which is what we're talking about today, physical therapy, also, you know, heat and cold. So, you know, heating pads, ice, Psychotherapy is one most people don't always consider. Also, surgical interventions such as if you have um, abdominal pain associated with appendicitis, you have an appendectomy where they remove your appendix and then the pain goes away once you're all healed up from the surgery. And then, of course, rest. So what are analgesics? So analgesics are medications that relieve pain. And unlike medications used for anesthesia during surgery, analgesics don't turn off nerves. They don't change the ability to sense your surroundings or alter your consciousness. They are sometimes called painkillers or pain relievers. So here you can see um, <clears throat> a nice little graphic um, of the breakdown of the types of analgesics. First, we have the non-opioids, um, and these include things like non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, 
acetaminophen and anti-epileptics. And then on the other side, we have just opioids. And there are natural opioids, and then there are semi-synthetic or synthetic opioids. Here, you can see this little chart of non-opioids. Each column, you see the classification, the brand name, the generic name, best used for, some side effects, and some warnings. Acetaminophen is first, otherwise known as Tylenol or um, Excedrin, and this is best used for minor aches and pains, also used as a fever reducer. Some side effects include you know, itching, swelling, stomach bleeding, and rash. Um, a warning, however, is possible liver damage, especially if you drink alcohol, so you want to limit your total dose to 2,000 milligrams per day. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, or NSAIDs. Um, the brand names for these include Advil, Motrin, and Aleve. Generic names are ibuprofen and naproxen. These are best used for um, a fever reducer as well as pain and an anti-inflammatory. Side effects include heartburn, dizziness, nausea, and some warnings um, may uh, NSAIDs may increase the risk of cardiac events and stroke. Um, there's also a risk for GI bleeding, and NSAIDs are known to cause kidney damage if taken more than um, the prescribed dose for an extended period of time. We also have anti-epileptics. Now, there are several other uh, drug names um, for anti-epileptics, but the ones that are used here for pain include Neurontin and Lyrica, otherwise known as Gabapentin and Pregambolin. Um, these are best used for uh, post-herpatic neuralgia or peripheral neuropathy or fibromyalgia. A lot of times you'll see these medications prescribed to people that have um, diabetes complications where they have neuropathy in their hands or their feet. Um, also for patients that have been treated uh, with chemotherapy sometimes develop neuropathy. Um, so we, you know, we prescribe Neurotin Lyrica for that as well. You have to be careful with these medications because sometimes um, some adverse effects can be suicidal thoughts or depression. This next slide here is just talking about the opioids itself. Now we first have the natural opioids, um, which include morphine, codeine, and thabine. Um, and then you have the semi-synthetic or synthetic opioids, including Altram or Tramadol, Oxycodone, Percocet. Percocet is a medication that's mixed with uh, oxycodone and acetaminophen. You also have Vicodin. Vicodin is a medication that is mixed, a, a mix of hydrocodone and acetaminophen together. There's also methadone, uh, Dilaudid or hydromorphone, and Opana or oxymorphone, and fentanyl. Now, the side effects for both the natural and the semi-synthetic or synthetic opioids are exactly the same. So these medications can induce relaxation, sometimes euphoria, pain relief is exactly what we want, um, sedation, but conf confusion, drowsiness, dizziness, nausea, vomiting, um, urinary retention, pupillary constriction and respiratory depression. And that's something you really need to watch out for if your patient is taking opioids, um, especially in the acute care setting. Um, and the warning for both of these, uh, these medications, um, they can lead to death from respiratory depression if overtaking or mixed with other sedatives, including alcohol. And uh, these medications can lead to dependence and addiction. So, you know, some teaching surrounding your, that you need to 
be cognitive about when talking to your patients about whether when they're taking opioids is that they're not taking these medications um, with other sedatives and they're not drinking alcohol with these medications and they're not misusing or overusing these medications. Um, and something else you should be aware of as well that, um, you know, we've talked at some point through these lessons about um, for form code dynamics and, um, you know, elderly patients tend to um, have a more difficult time, you know, processing medications and excreting them through their body through their um, kidney and kidneys and their liver so um, you know they can sometimes have a greater reaction or a bigger reaction to um, these opioids or these types of medications so you just really want to be aware um, and make sure that you are doing your due did doing your due did diligence and um, uh, just making sure you're educating them about these side effects and the warnings.